Hello. Um, I have 219, so I'll call the meeting back to order. At this time, we're going to move into our federal me member agency project spotlight. Today, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Mary Jo Rico, who has agreed to give our agency spotlight today on the indoor air quality tools for schools program. And that is a program that is out of our Indoor Environments Division at EPA. Mary Jo works as a biologist for the Indoor Environments Division. She is focused on translating scientific research surrounding indoor air quality in schools into actionable steps and guidance for school districts across the country. Mary Jo. Thanks, Laureen. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Mary Jo Errico, and um, I'm with the IQ Tools for Schools program of the Indoor Environments Division of the EPA. Today I'm going to talk about our program and especially what we've been doing over the past year and a half during the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. So everyone on this call knows how important indoor air quality is, especially indoor air quality in schools. So this is just a little bit of background and statistics. So indoor air contaminants can cause or exacerbate health and performance problems for children in schools. And children miss about 14 million school days every year because of poor IAQ and related medical conditions, such as, such as asthma and allergies, which can be worsened by poor IAQ. The most recent data indicate that the average school in the United States is 55 years old and that a quarter of schools need extensive repair and a half of schools report complaints related to IAQ. Next slide. So our program has been working over the past 20 years to help schools put in place IAQ management programs. So our program provides technical assistance, guidance, training, and resources to equip schools to launch, build, and sustain comprehensive IQ management programs. We have a wide range of tools and technical assistance on different topics, such as HVAC and ventilation, mold and moisture control, integrated pest management, preventative maintenance, and the interplay between energy efficiency and IQ. We also maintain an array of partnerships with schools and children's health organizations and collaborate with federal partners to promote school environmental health. One of the main things we do in this program is host in-depth IQ professionals training webinar series, such as the Masterclass series and the Knowledge to Action series. And finally, we communicate with our stakeholders via the school's IQ connector network. Next slide. So here's just kind of a list of uh, this, our suite of resources. So like I said, we host uh, various webinars. Today I'll be talking about the Healthy Indoor Environments in Schools webinar series, which is our newest series. We have a wide range of tools under the, um, under the Tools for Schools banner, such as the framework, the action kit, the preventative maintenance guidelines, design tools for schools, energy savings plus health, the mobile app, and various videos and publications about IQ in school. And finally, we have our listserv through Gov Delivery. Next slide. So we have been promoting healthy IQ in schools over the past 20 years, but of course there has been, over the past year and a half, an incredible increased interest nationwide in healthy indoor environments, especially healthy school indoor environments as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Schools are looking for information on how to respond to COVID-19 and now how to re reopen safely. And so I'll talk about how we've communicated with our stakeholders over the past year and a half and the evolution of our messaging, starting with Gov Deliveries that we originally sent out, which morphed into a new web page, a new webinar series, a new infographic, and new and strengthened collaboration with partners. Next slide. So our listserv comprises, is comprised of professionals from across the country, from education, public health, and facility management sectors. 
Many of our subscribers are from schools and school districts and work in facility management or in environmental health. So we originally sent out our first GOV delivery in April of 2020, and that's the one on the far left. You know, when the COVID-19 pandemic started, just to send schools and school districts resources that were available at the time. So this included the CDC guidance that was available at the time, as well as EPA guidance, mainly focusing on list N, and also resources from our own program on cleaning and disinfecting. Since at that time, that was the state of the science, was focusing more on cleaning and disinfecting. We then sent out subsequent gov deliveries, such as the one that's shown in the middle, with more recommendations and guidance on cleaning and disinfecting. However, as everyone knows, there's been a shift from COVID-19 being spread through surface transmission to now it's understood that it's spread through airborne transmission primarily. And so we shifted our messaging to um, emphasize ventilation and other strategies such as that, like air cleaning. Shown on the far right is a sample gum delivery message. During the pandemic, our listserv subscriptions have greatly increased. They've increased by 54%. And as of August 2021, we've su surpassed 100,000 subscribers. Next slide. So after we released the original Gov Delivery message in April 2020, we put it up on our website on the main IQ and Schools homepage so that those who aren't subscribed to our listserv yet could get that information. However, of course, now this is out of date, so we have recently updated that web page, and it is now housed on EPA's main coronavirus website in the indoor air and coronavirus section. And here is a screenshot of the web page on the right. This web page includes guidance from EPA and other federal agencies such as, such as CDC and the Department of Education, focused on how to respond to COVID-19, how to reopen schools safely. However, the second half of the web page, we wanted to help schools connect how responding to COVID-19, they could then build an IQ management program. We've been hearing from schools that those who had an IQ management program already in place before COVID-19 had an easier time pivoting and responding to COVID-19, whereas schools who didn't have an IQ management program in place found it more difficult. So we're hoping to help schools now that they've been responding to COVID-19, institutionalize and put in place those best management practices for indoor air quality so that they can respond to future events and also just improve their indoor air quality in general in their schools. So on this page, we have resources such as how to establish an IQ management program, how to perform routine HVAC maintenance, develop a communications plan, and train and educate staff members. Next slide. So one of the main things our program does is host webinars. So at the beginning of the pandemic, we started a new webinar series called the Healthy Indoor Environments in School Series. So in these webinars, we'll feature different scientists or public health experts, as well as schools and school districts. Um, some of whom had an IQ management program in place and pivoted, and some who didn't have one in place and have created one as, in response to the pandemic. So here's a timeline of the webinars that we posted. There has been eight so far. The ninth one is actually happening tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, if you want to tune in. At the beginning of the pandemic, once again, there was more of a focus on cleaning and disinfecting which then quickly shifted to talking about ventilation and air cleaning, and now has been focused on comprehensive IQ strategies for reopening. Our webinar registrants and participants have greatly increased during the pandemic. So between 2019, before the pandemic, and 2020, during the pandemic, we saw a 450% increase in our webinar participants. The schools are definitely hungry for this information. Next slide. 
Lately, we've been observing an increase in questions during our webinars about emerging technologies, especially air cleaning technologies. Schools are being inundated with advertising from different manufacturers and different um, products about uh, you know, air cleaning or different just technologies on responding to COVID-19. And they're looking to us for guidance on which technologies they should purchase since they only have a limited budget, um, which ones will be uh, the best to use, um, will work. And so we developed an infographic that was released last month on proven strategies to improve your indoor air quality in schools, strategies that have a strong scientific basis and have been recommended by our program as well as the larger indoor environments division. The three strategies we highlighted are increasing ventilation rate, increasing HVAC, filter efficiency, and supplementing with portable air cleaners when needed. Air cleaners that do not generate ozone and that are um, use filtration technology. Next slide. Besides hosting our own webinars, we've also participated in multiple outside engagements with a wide range of partners across the education, environment, and public health sectors. Here's a sample of different organizations that we have um, partnered with and been featured on their webinars uh, in, during the past year and a half. This is just a sample, not a total list. But what has been exciting is that some of these partners are new partners that we've never worked with before, before the pandemic. For example, AIHA, which is the American Industrial Hygiene Association, we didn't have any type of relationship with them before the pandemic, and now we've been featured on multiple of their webinars, and they've been featured on, on one of our webinars. Something else that has happened is that the Virginia School Plant Management Association, or VSPMA, reached out to us wanting a tailored technical assistance webinar to explain how American Rescue Plan funds, which I'll talk about in the next slide, could be used to improve IQ in schools. And so we hosted this tailored technical assistance webinar for them where they could ask a lot of questions. And we hope to expand this model in the future where we could have tailored webinars for different states or local communities. Next slide. So the American Rescue Plan, this is a, a kind of background on it if you're not familiar with it. It set aside $122 billion to the Department of Education, which then $81 billion of, dollars of that was set aside for state education agencies to award to local education agencies to address co uh, reopening after COVID-19. And there's 18 areas of activities that are covered by these funds, five of which are IEQ related or infrastructure improvement. And so the text of the act is um, on the right of the, these five IEQ related activities that are covered. Basically, it includes training of staff on minimizing the spread of infectious disease, purchasing cleaning supplies, school facility repairs to reduce risk of virus transmission, inspection, testing, maintenance, repair, replacement, and upgrade projects to improve IAQ in schools, especially improving the HVAC systems for adding air, cleaning, air cleaners, and also to implement public health strategies recommended by the CDC, which the CDC has recommended ventilation as a strategy for reopening. Next slide. So we wanted to be able to reach these state and local education agencies to promote that these funds could be used for IAQ activities. So we've we strengthened our partnership and collaboration with the Department of Education, which has been very fruitful during this time to make this known to the state and local education agencies. So we've worked with them to develop new resources. Some of those are the use of funds guidance. This included a guidance document, FAQs, and also a ventilation brief specifically highlighting how the ARP funds could be used to improve ventilation in schools. 
We've added our resources to their clearinghouse website so that state and local education agencies can find our resources through that channel. And also we participated on a webinar with them and CDC in June where we talked about how these funds could be used for ventilation and IQ upgrades. We've also continued participation in the Federal Partners in School Health Work Group run by the Department of Education. They also have a resource website where they've added a COVID-19 section and we've added some of our newer resources to that section. Next slide. So looking forward, we're hoping to continue to capitalize on this increased interest in IQ in schools. For example, we want to continue um, to develop evergreen materials. The infographic that I showed earlier actually never says COVID-19 on it. So though schools are using it for that purpose now, they'll be able to use it in the future just to see different proven strategies to improve IAQ in their school, even beyond the pandemic. We also want to continue providing technical assistance to help institutionalize these IQ management best practices. So schools are starting to do these IQ management practices for responding directly to COVID-19, but we want to help schools to institutionalize these, help them make the case to their school administration, use the framework to guide their planning and actions so that they can continue having this IQ management program in place, which will help their IQ in their schools even beyond the pandemic. We also want to focus on messaging that emphasizes proven strategies, just like our infographic, and have more messaging like that. And also continue and strengthen collaboration with our partners, especially our federal partners. And I'll end with the three-legged stool. So schools in the past have mainly focused on student and staff performance, also a bit on occupant health, but the physical environment has been very neglected as I showed in the stats at the beginning, but you need all three in order to have a healthy school learning environment. And so we're hoping one of the good things that comes out of the pandemic is that schools and school districts now understand more the importance of the physical environment for a healthy learning environment and how the physical environment can affect occupant health and student and staff performance. Next slide. So thank you for your attention and I'll take any of your questions that you may have. Thank you so much. We do have a couple of questions um, that we can ask and just want to thank you again for that presentation. So the first is, our school district does not have an IAQ management program. Where should we start and what should we do? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so you can go to our website, epa.gov slash IAQ dash school. And um, one of the first links is um, about um, like how to start an IAQ management program. And so we have a, a big list of resources there that walk you through each step. So especially look, you know, for the framework and the action kit. Those are the two first resources I would look at that really walk you through how, how do you start a management program? How do you make uh, a gain buy-in? Um, you know, what steps do you take? Who do you talk to? So I, I would look at those first um, to uh, help start an IQ management program. Thank you. Just want to remind everyone that if you have a question, you can submit it using this, the questions function on your right control panel. The next question is, the pandemic has taught us a lot about the importance of ventilation. Should we continue these practices post-pandemic? Yes, definitely. Um, ventilation is very important. And so in the past, you know, there has, you know, there's the ventilation has been a bit neglected in school. So now there is a lot of emphasis on it. Um, so that should definitely continue into the future. 
um, because that uh, ventilation is really a way that uh, you know it can affect and improve your IAQ if you have a good ventilation system. Great, thank you. Another question is, are these healthy indoor environment webinars for everyone who should watch them? Yeah, any anyone can watch them. Um, they're mainly geared towards school and school district staff, especially facility management staff. Um, but we've had many different participants on our webinars, you know, ranging from scientists and public health, you know, experts to teachers will attend our webinars or even parents. So uh, really anyone can watch them, though they are geared towards uh, facility and management staff. Thank you. We did get a question asking how to register for tomorrow's schools webinar. I just wanted to let everyone know we did put that link in the chat, uh, as well as some schools resources. So please click that link if you would like to register for tomorrow's webinar. One other question, how can state agencies share your webinars with local school districts? Um, yeah, uh, state agencies could just, you know, they could um, basically just link to our webinars. Um, I think, you know, other, some school districts have done where they'll have like a big kind of viewing of it or everyone views it at the same time. Um, so uh, just, you know, you could you send out the link, the links on the website, um, and you could, you know, share it with uh, different uh, uh, local districts that way. Thank you. I think we have a couple more coming in. Um, so the next question is, what is EPA's stance on IAQ monitoring in schools? Do they consider this important to an IAQ plan for schools? Um, our, our stance is that um, though IAQ monitoring uh, can be helpful, um, there is a lot of considerations to take with different like monitoring technologies and sensor technologies um, to understand what they can and cannot do. Um, our resources go into this a little bit more in detail, um, but for a lot of this, um, you know, having some type of, you know, monitoring to measure ventilation is the most helpful, but having a full, you know, sensor array to measure every, you know, contaminant is, is, is definitely not necessary, and we don't recommend that. Great. Thank you. I believe that's it. Um, Lorraine, I can pass it back over to you. Thanks so much, for Mary Jo, for that great presentation and for all the great work you and the team do to help improve IAQ in our schools. Um, our, again, the link to the school's website will be in our chat. Uh, and at any time, you can also contact us at this, contact me at CIAQ, and I will quickly pass the messages over to the group that does our school's work.